let's bring the ghost with the most into D&D, &D, making Beetlejuice as a playable character. And we're going to start with the species, and we're going to go with a Reborn. This is the most ghostly we can go as far as a playable character species. This does give us two additional skills by choosing this species, and we're going to choose animal handling to deal with whatever creatures wind up being in the Beetlejuice universe, but maybe not handling sandworms too well. And then we're going to grab stealth because you do tend to lurk in the shadows occasionally, even though you'd like to be out front and center whenever possible. Then when it comes to a background, we're going to choose charlatan. It's just way too fitting for Beetlejuice. This gives us skill proficiencies in deception and sleight of hand and a forgery kit. And then it also gives us a feat, which is actually going to be the skilled feat, giving us proficiency in three more skills. So we're going to grab Arcana, history because you have lived through or unlived through a bunch of history and then finally perception just because it's helpful to have then when it comes to some starting stats we're gonna have a point spread that looks like this really leaning into that charisma and with that kind of charisma i was very torn between two different classes because i think he leans more into a single type of class than anything else and i was very tempted to go with sorcerer for wild magic sorcerer because of all the chaos that he ensues however He's the one causing and controlling the chaos pretty much all the time. And he is definitely a bit of a showboat to say the least. So we're going to go with a bard instead. Becoming a bard gives us proficiency with some musical instruments and three different skills. So we're going to grab performance for obvious reasons, as well as persuasion and intimidation because intimidation you really like to scare people that's kind of your thing then at first level of bard you also get some spell casting but we're going to save the spell casting for one big chunk at the end of this video then the next feature you get at first level of bard is bardic inspiration allowing you to inspire those around you now you usually use these a bit more selfishly but uh We'll get to that in a minute. For now, you can use them to inspire others on any D20 roll. You can use it a number of times equal to your charisma modifier, and the size of the dice also increases with your level of bard. It's a D6 for right now, and it goes up to a D8 at 5th level, a D10 at 10th level, and then a D12 at 15th level. Then at 2nd level of bard, you get expertise in two skills, allowing you to double your proficiency bonus in them. So you're the ghost with the most, we want to make sure you boost up your performance and your intimidation. And for the very few skills that you don't have, you have the feature Jack of All Trades. So you can actually add half of your proficiency bonus to any skills that you are not proficient in. I am not a huge fan of this feature anymore in 2024, just because it's so easy to get the skilled feat so early on, meaning that this has become way less useful. But it's still a little useful nonetheless. Then at third level of Bard, you get to choose a Bard subclass. And you're all about scaring the crap out of people. So we're going to choose College of Whispers. Then one of the first features when you take this subclass is Words of Terror. So you can really just absolutely terrify somebody, which is kind of your thing. That's what you market yourself as. So if you speak to a humanoid alone for one minute, you can absolutely terrify them. At the end of the conversation, the creature has to make a wisdom saving throw. And if they fail, they are frightened of you and anybody you decide for the next one hour. Or until that creature is attacked or damaged by you or your party. But if the target actually succeeds, they have no idea you were trying to scare them. Also, by choosing this subclass, you get Psychic Blades. So when you hit a creature with a weapon attack, you can actually deal additional damage to them by spending one of your Bardic Inspiration die. Then you get to deal an extra 2d6 Psychic damage to them. You can only do so once per round, and this winds up upgrading as you level up in Bard, increasing to 3d6 at 5th level, 5d6 at 10th level and 8d6 at 15th level. Now, a lot of people might say, well, why would he be stabbing people? He's Beetlejuice. Well, Beetlejuice, like one of the very first things he tries to offer up is absolutely murdering other people. So it's not really out of the realm of possibility for him. Then at fourth level of Bard, you get an ability score improvement. So we're going to go ahead and boost up our charisma by two points. At fifth level of Bard, you get to regain your Bardic Inspiration on a short or long rest when you used to have to wait for a long rest. At sixth level of being a Whispers Bard, you get Mantle of Whispers. So you get the ability to adopt a humanoid's persona. So if somebody dies within 30 feet of you, you can kind of make yourself look like them. You now 
shall look like the dead person but healthy and alive. This disguise lasts for one hour or until you end it as a bonus action. And when you're in that disguise, you actually gain all of the information that that dead person would have already known, but only the information they would freely share. This disguise can fall apart if somebody winds up trying to do an insight check versus your deception check though. At seventh level of bard, you get counter charm along you or somebody else around you to reroll a save against being charmed or frightened. At eighth level of bard, you get another ability score improvement. So we're going to go ahead and max out that charisma. At ninth level of bard, you get expertise and two more skills. So we're going to boost up that deception, which is really going to help some of our other features and then try to boost up our persuasion as well to boost up our sales tactics. At 10th level of bard, we get magical secrets. So we can dive into any spell list, but in the 2024 version, the amount of spell lists gets limited ever so slightly. Now you can only grab from the bard, cleric, druid, or wizard spell list. No more touching the sorcerer spell list and no more grabbing stuff from half casters anymore. This used to kind of break things and make it so people could get spells that rangers couldn't get to super high levels. So I understand why they did it. It's still a little unfortunate though. At 12th level of bard, you get another ability score improvement. So we're going to take a feat this time and we're going to grab lucky, giving us a number of luck points equal to our proficiency bonus, allowing us to either give ourselves advantage on a d20 roll or for somebody else to have disadvantage. At 14th level of Bard, thanks to being a Whisper Bard, you get Shadow Lore. And this is really trying to scare people in a deep, deep level. As an action, you magically whisper into somebody's mind. That creature has to make a wisdom saving throw, and on a failed save, it's charmed by you. And it's charmed by you and your allies for the next eight hours. And it generally interprets any of the whispering you were doing as you revealing its deepest, darkest secrets and fears and that creature is then going to do whatever you tell it to do out of fear that you're going to reveal those secrets it won't risk its life for you or fight for you but it will still do plenty of other things basically granting you any favors it would one of its closest friends then at 16th level of bard we get another ability score improvement so we're going to take another feat and we want to grab another origin feat because we want to make you a little harder to take out so we're going to take the feat tough, giving us an extra two hit points of health per level of this overall build. Now we've taken two origin feats here, which means we're missing out on a little bit of ability scores, but I think the bonuses behind those feats make a little more sense for the character. Then at 18th level of Bard, you get superior inspiration. So if you roll initiative and you have less than two inspiration die, you gain some back until you have at least two in your pool. Then at 19th level of Bard, you get an epic boon. And I'm going to take the boon of dimensional travel. There's so many times where you're just like teleporting behind people and just popping up to either scare them or just wrap your arms around them or do whatever weird stuff you do as Beetlejuice. And this gives you the feature blink steps. So at the end of your action, you automatically can teleport 30 feet. This epic boon also gives you one ability score improvement. So we're going to go ahead and put one point into constitution. Then the 20th and max level feature you get from being a bard is Words of Creation. This is one of the new additions in 2024, and this allows you to master two words of creation, making it so you always have Power Word Heal and Power Word Kill at your disposal. You always have them prepared and you can target an additional creature with it, as long as that creature is within 10 feet of the original target. And doing a double Power Word Kill is pretty darn powerful. But since we have all of those sorted out, let's finally dive through the spells. We'll grab some stuff like Chill Touch, which is just a creepy spectral dead hand to grab somebody. Infestation for covering somebody in insects. Minor Illusion, because that's pretty handy for Beetlejuice. And of course, we gotta grab Vicious Mockery, which did get a little bit of an upgrade doing a D6 of damage in 2024, upgraded from a D4 in 2014. Now, as far as the leveled spells, I'm gonna run through the important ones. I'll include the rest of everything I can possibly think of on the character sheet up on Patreon. But as far as the absolutely needed ones, well, we're gonna grab Tasha's Caustic Brew because there's plenty of like gross stuff that just comes out of Beetlejuice. We'll grab Cause Fear because you're the ghost with the most. When you get to second level spells, grab Silence so you can stop people from saying your name three times if you've already been summoned. Once you get third level spells, you wanna grab Fear. Once you get fourth level spells, definitely grab some more chaotic things that you can have a bit more fun with like confusion because some of Beetlejuice's stuff is confusing as hell and probably grab hallucinatory terrain to make some really crazy things in the environment and on the same note once you get fifth level spells grab synaptic static to really just mess with people's heads and make them just not really able to put thoughts together and 
since you do poltergeisting, you definitely want to make sure you grab animate objects to make things float around and do what you need them to do. Grab hold monster to just hold somebody in place. And again, to move stuff around, grab telekinesis. Then once you get six level, grab eye bite because you can make people totally panicked with that spell. Then grab mental prison because that allows you to create somebody's own personal terrifying experience. And don't forget Otto's irresistible dance. You kind of have some iconic dance moments in the Beetlejuice movies. Then skipping right ahead to 8th level spells, grab Glibness. It makes it so you basically can't fail charisma checks, replacing any number rolled with a 15. And then for a ninth level spell, you got to grab Shape Change. Because frankly, when I was younger and I watched Beetlejuice, the most terrifying thing to me ever was when Beetlejuice turned into that snake railing thing and when he like looked over and he had the Beetlejuice face with those long pointy teeth yeah that scared the crap out of me when I was a kid but you turn into plenty of other stuff throughout the series so I think in general having shape change at your disposal is probably necessary but that's pretty much the majority of the spell list if you have anything else you would do differently with this build let me know in the comments down below and if you want access to the character sheet for this build or any of my other builds feel free to check out my patreon linked in the description down below